I think it's very relevant to your focus on advancing human health because the model that we're using in this reincarnation experiment, which I'll explain in a little bit more detail, uh, really is focused on a psychophysical model of human development. And obviously it's the interrelationship between one's emotional state and one's physical state and one's personality that determines uh, our health. Let me explain at the beginning uh, what the reincarnation experiment is, because I think everyone has heard of the concept of reincarnation, but they're usually uh, thinking in sort of spiritual terms or ethereal terms that uh, don't have much to do with our daily lives and the reality of how we live today's lifetime. It's something that happened in the past and we're somehow connected to it, but we don't know what that really means. We have before starting the reincarnation experiment, done a review of the most uh, varied kinds of research into reincarnation, and we discovered that uh, in the best cases that have been developed by people like Ian Stevenson, who worked on this for 40-something years at the University of Virginia, and other people who are looking at a sort of a scientific model, have discovered a certain uh, set of factors that appear to uh, be a part of the legacy that each of us inherits when we're born that can be connected to specific prior lives. And so what we decided to do is to determine uh, which of these factors could be uh, measured empirically uh, to meet a scientific standard and to develop uh, a full picture, or as full as it can be developed, of what is involved actually in reincarnation. So that experiment then has uh, proceeded starting off with a, what we call a meta-analysis, looking at a variety of different cases, identifying the factors that seem to be present in these past life cases, and combining them, synthesizing them into a measurable uh, set of uh, parameters that we look at, physical, biometric uh, material, and also psychological, emotional, mental uh, factors that seem to be involved. And then, as we developed that model, we uh, reached out to other scientists to get concepts from biology and genetics and evolutionary theory and uh, physics, uh, the people who are working on the edges of science to understand the multidimensionality of the universe and, and how consciousness is embedded in or maybe to say it more correctly, how matter and energy is embedded in consciousness. So these new concepts in science gave us a, a foundation uh, which we call this psychoplasm. Uh, psychoplasm, you could call it the soul genome if you would like because soul is sort of the traditional term that we use for this sort of eternal transcendent aspect of the human being. Uh, but to try to be scientific, we wanted to use a term, as most uh, scientists use, Latin or Greek, to come up with a term, and we uh, uh, sort of moved on from the word that Ian Stevenson used, which was psychophore, which was a container that carried forward these traits and attributes that he had discovered in children. And uh, so we said, it's really more than a container. It, it, it is a, it's like a cell. It has a membrane and it has all the parts in it too. So we use the term psychoplasm, which simply means the container and the elements that comprise the soul. And this is the concept. So we're now collecting evidence, doing uh, statistical analyses, using uh, biometric science, photo identification, DNA uh, sequencing, uh, personality tests, psychological tests, etc., to compare two lifetimes. Health is an integral process. It involves our emotions, our physical body, our environment, our way of thinking about ourselves, all of these factors, and they are integral. Uh, so uh, the reason that uh, we can find connections between previous lives, or I should say alleged previous lives, because you know we can't say 100% that this is exactly a past life identification and so on, but to the best of our ability we can say this is likely to be a past life connection that we've discovered. Uh, we go back to the work of 
Freud and Jung and Brewer uh, and others, you know, more than a hundred years ago, when they discovered that uh, children uh, and young people suffered from physical symptoms, from psychological symptoms, that they, uh, uh, in their uh, regression uh, process that was developed at that time, to childhood, uh, they discovered that when those memories and, and patterns uh, that, from their point of view, had developed in early childhood, had an effect on the individual's health. I mean, you had from things as simple as asthma to uh, a total uh, uh, nervous breakdown. Uh, almost a psychotic kind of episode might occur, and there was no explanation in the current environment or the current situation. So uh, the early use of uh, hypnosis for regression uh, discovered that this cathartic release that comes to uh, the individual patient or client uh, happens when real, authentic, embedded, forgotten energies are discovered and exposed. So what's happened in past life uh, regression research over the last 30 plus years is the same process works except that you're not going back to childhood. You're going back to connect a symptom today with a possible event in a previous lifetime. And there's so many cases of this that uh, the, the literature is, is filled as you read different books on reincarnation. But let's just take uh, uh, an example, which is really one of the first ones that came to light was uh, with Jungian analyst uh, Roger Wilger back in the 1970s. He had a client who was almost in a catatonic state. I mean, was totally immobilized, unable to uh, take care of herself, if it happened to be a woman, uh, physically, and who could not do her work in terms of her artistic uh, career uh, that had become totally blocked. Uh, discovering that there had been a possible previous lifetime as an artist, which was a total failure, ended in some suicide attempts, uh, the person in that previous lifetime was unable to care for her uh, mother and her family members who needed her help, and it turned out to be a disastrous end to that life. Here we have the person living today who is also expressing, because in the reincarnation research that we are doing and with the psychoplasm model, we're finding that we bring not only those physical challenges and tensions and so on, but we bring our creative talents. So here's this person, a very creative artist, able to uh, uh, earn a wonderful living in this lifetime, and yet being held down by the memories of that previous life, fearing that she was going to fail her mother in this lifetime again, that she was going to have to end her own life because of her lack of a capability to get it all together. Uh, and when she discovered this possible previous life, the cathartic experience happened, and she was able to release this fear, uh, this uh, sense of, of immobilization, and there was a healing, psychosomatic healing, and also a psychological healing. And so it's this combination that's involved here. Uh, there have been people who have had uh, limbs that didn't function, you know, up, all of a sudden in the middle of a successful career uh, as a musician, uh, someone's arm becomes frozen, not able to play the violin anymore. Where did that come from?